said he done, he cares. Cares for me. He cares for you. He cares for me. And he will never, never let us down. Good morning. I greet you in the powerful and penetrating name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is indeed another privilege and an honor to stand and speak to you from God's holy, sacred, and divine word. We believe in God-powered preaching, sound doctrine teaching, compassionate reaching, and hallelujah praise. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And our main objective is winning souls. This morning is fifth Sunday and we have a different format. We uh, have our fifth Sunday Eastern District Union service of True Vine Churches, Pentecostal Churches Incorporated. And we have President Deacon Bobby Taylor, and we have Pastor Brenda Tootin, the pastor of From the Heart Ministries in Spring Hope, North Carolina, with us this morning to assist us with the service. We also have uh, our assistant overseer, Dr. Elder Derek Sauls, and also the communication director of True Vine, Elder Demetrius Hunter. We'd like to start this morning with a word of prayer, and we're going to ask Pastor Tooting to lead us to the throne of grace in prayer. Amen. Let us pray. Precious and eternal Father, Lord God, it's in the name of Jesus that we come into your presence. We thank you, Lord God, for this day. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy being extended toward us. We thank you, Lord God, for how you are moving by your spirit. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord God, that we can fellowship again one with another. We thank you, Lord God, for this fifth Sunday Eastern District Union and yes. bringing us together in unity. We ask, Lord God, that even as we go forth on this day, that you would just fill our overseer's mouth with your word, that you would anoint him afresh and anew, that every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Lord God will be do all that you have called it to do. We thank you for those that are listening, those that are online, Lord God. Thank you. Those that are watching. We just said, Lord God, have your way. Minister to the hearts of your people on this day. Build them up where they are towing down. Encourage their hearts, Lord God, where they are struggling. Give them a sound mind and a peace of mind in the time that we in this season that we are in now. We ask, Lord God, that the leading of the Holy Spirit would just speak to us on this day. Give us listening ears, receptacle hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tudin. Now the morning message. It's not a good feeling to get stung by a bee. And it's definitely not a good feeling to get stung by the same bee twice. However, allegorically speaking, that is what happened to the Pharaoh of Egypt. He was stubborn, he was pig-headed, unyielding, and refused to listen to the messengers that God sent to him. Well, I have a message, and I pray that it will help you all listening and watching in a, such a time as this. I would like to talk about the second wave. I'm going to ask Pastor Tootin to read for us Exodus 8, 13 through 15. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, out of the villages, and out of the fields. 14, and they gathered them together upon heaps, and the land stank. 15, but when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart, and hardened not unto them as the Lord had said. Thank you, Pastor Tudin. After the first plague, whereby God turned the water into blood all over the land, Pharaoh's inner flexibility to listen and obey the truth brought even more plagues 
on he and his people. The Egyptians got hit with a wave of epidemics and outbreaks. The second wave of plagues brought frogs up from the water and they completely covered the land. These frogs went into the mud brick houses of the poor. They been, it went into the better brick houses and homes of the rich and even got past the household servants and entered into royal bedrooms. They infiltrated everywhere and no place in Egypt was safe from them. Deacon Bobatello, I'm going to ask you to read for us Exodus 8, 1 through 4. Amen. And the Lord spoke unto to Moses, go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus says the Lord, let my people go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thou borders with frogs, and the rivers shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thine, thine house, and into thou bedchambers, and upon thou beds and into the house of the servants, and upon thy people, and into thine ovens, and into thy kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on thee, and upon thy people, and upon all thy servants. Thank you, Deacon Bobatella. This second wave was a combination of several plagues which all were a recipe for disaster, catastrophe, and much suffering. I told you a few Sundays ago about the fraud, and that could remind us as God's children that F-R-O-G meant to us fully rely on God. Remember that? But sadly, this ruler during these times, he fully relied on himself, and he assumed that he himself was a god. And Moses and his followers had to submit to his authority and believe in the works of his fake magicians. I told you last Sunday that God is fair and in control. Remember that? Yes, sir. Isaiah 55 says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And our God, for he will abundantly part. And the Lord said, for my thoughts, are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Who would have thought back then that God had a plan for Pharaoh's daughter to come down to bathe in the river? Who would have thought that later she and her handmaidens would later walk along the riverbank and see a baby among reeds? And who would have thought that the same baby would end up being an adopted baby by Pharaoh's daughter? And she would name him Moses. Who would have thought that this baby would grow up and witness the oppressions, the burdens, the hard labor of his people and would become so emotional that he would get himself in trouble while trying to stand up for them. Moses wanted to do something about unfair treatment of his people and he took to violence, but that was the wrong way to go about it. Dr. Saul, read for us Exodus 2, 11 through 15. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren 
and looked on their burdens and he spied an Egypt, Egyptian, spiting an Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to, to him that, that did he wrong, wherefore smiteth thou my fellow? And he said, who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. Thank you, Dr. Sauls. Who would have thought that this same Moses that got in so much trouble would now be called at a burning bush? and go back as an ordained man of God, whom God made a God. That's God with the small g. And in this text, this lesson here, we have two gods. Moses, that was made a God over Pharaoh by the almighty God, and Pharaoh, who deemed himself to be a God. But Moses got in so much trouble and Moses went back and did as the Lord said, let my people go. All right. After this first plague, Pharaoh's inflexibility to listen and obey the truth brought again even more plagues on he and his people. Here we again, we see that the Egyptians got hit with waves and waves of pestilences. This second wave was a combination of several plagues, which were a recipe for disaster, as we said. So look here at all of the suffering that the ruler, that the leader brought upon his, himself, his land, and all of his people. Who would have thought that God in this second wave of plagues would later turn dust into lice and later on all Egyptian stock livestock would die while not even any of Israel's livestock got sick boils broke out on everyone in Egypt later on hailstorms locusts and total darkness covered Egypt while only the Hebrews could see. What do you see? What do you see now, my Christian friends? Do you see God in the midst of everything going on? I sure hope you do. Who would have thought that after a week of America trying to get back and reach old and new normals, we would now have more and more abnormals to deal with. Am I right about it? Right. right now, many Americans are asking and wondering and saying, what in the world is going on? Well, let me tell you what's going on. God's plan is what's going on. And God is still in control. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Although some of us may not understand or can realize it, but we as church folk and believers, we must know that God has and always has our best interests at hand. Mm -hmm. And he is always working it out for us. Can I get a witness? Yeah. He may not come when we want him, but he's always on time. He is working it out yes. for you and for me mm -hmm. and for all of his people. I stopped by today to let you know that the Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. Right. History tells us to know that there has been repeated waves of terrorism, racism, oppressions all over the world since the beginning of time. 
A spirit of competition called Cain to kill his own brother Abel. The spirit of jealousy called Joseph's siblings to throw him in a pit and leave him for dead. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. There have been many mass murderers, mass murders, mass murder suicides, cyclones, floods, hurricanes, heat waves, car crashes, airplane crashes, helicopter crashes. You name it. There have been deadly diseases, plagues, and pandemics and violence in our streets for generations and will be for generations to come. Right. In these times like this, we need a word from the Lord. Yeah. The Bible says that Paul says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And when he says that, he's talking about us, the church, the believer, his people. Now it's time for God's glorious power to be revealed that we don't have to render evil for evil, but we know that we can overcome evil with good. Now it's time for all of us to do something good. Do some good praying. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. How many of you are praying for the healing of the land? We shouldn't have to just wait on what happened last night or last week or the week before. We are supposed to always be praying without ceasing for this world and for our families and for our church and for sinners everywhere. Am I right about it? Some are saying, will there be a second wave of COVID-19? Some are saying, will there be a second wave of stimulus checks? Some are now in the world witnessing a second I can't breathe death. And that is so sad. I can't predict about the second waves, but I do know that there will be a second coming of the Lord. And there will be a time that every knee, I said every knee, every knee must bow. And every knee, every tongue shall confess that he is God. And see, when I say every knee, that means the president's knee. That means the politician's knee. That means the policeman's knee. That means your knee, my knee, our children's knee. That means that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. And he, I don't know what the future holds, but I'm glad that I know the one who holds the future. Yes, and his name is J-E-S-U-S. -S. His name is Jesus. Yes. Am I right about it? Yes. And what we've got to think about, church, that when we have sung our last song, when we have prayed our last prayer, when we have marched our last march, when we have breathed our last breath, Let's make sure that we didn't just all we do was protest. Let's make sure that there's a time that we confess. Because Jesus is coming back. Yes, he is. Whether there's a second wave or not, I'm not sure. But I do know there is going to be a second coming. And I want everybody, I want everybody to be ready when he comes. Come on. Elder Hunter, and pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you as humble as we know how. Yes. Give you thanks and praise for this day, this time, and this hour right now, God. God, we understand that it is by your power and your might that we have come to this place in appointed time in this 
in society right now, God. And God, before we ask anything, we want to say thank you right now, God. In the midst of our trials and tribulations, we want to say thank you because we realize even in this turbulent situation, it is your grace and your mercy that yet holds us still. And God, with that same power that held and that same power that brought us to this place, we're calling on that same power right now in the name of Jesus. God, we say, come and heal your land. You asked us to turn from our wicked ways. So right now, God, we, we say if there's anything we have done by omission or commission that separates us from you, take it out and make us anew right now, God. And God, we're not praying just for ourselves, our houses, our cars. We're praying for a time such as this. We're praying for bodies to be healed. We're praying for troubled minds to be calm. We're praying for peace in our nation and in our streets. We're praying for love to abound more than hate. We're praying that peace overtakes the spirit of war. We're praying that everyone under the sound of our voice can understand that you are still on the throne and you still sit high and look low and you still have the power to change a heart like never before. And right now, God, with that change, we ask that you let us be a part of your plan. You said in your word, a house that sits on the hill cannot be hid. And right now, God, we want to be the house on the hill. We want to be the light of the world. We want to be the salt of the earth. Help us help somebody else right now, God. Take us back and put us on the potter's wheel. Fix us up where we need to be fixed up. Take us back to where we first found you and let us run with this gospel message, not for ourselves, but for your name to get all the glory, for somebody to cry out, what must I do to be saved? Give us a heart to love more. Give us compassion to reach more. Give us uh, empathy to, 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 to reach more and more and more. And right now, God, we ask that you continue to bless us. Continue to bless the ones under the side of my voice. Continue to bless the bereaved hearts. Continue to bless the ones that do not know you in the pardon of their sins. Let them realize that they have a God that loves them more than they can even imagine. And God, we ask that you let the church be that example of the love that God has. And right now, God, we ask you to bless every pastor on the side of my voice. Our pastor, our overseer, Pastor Tubin, all the ones that have the responsibility to hold the church together. And right now, God, we say thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for how you're going to move. Thank you because the man of God said that you have a plan. And thank you for your plan to work out. For you said we have an expected end. And we're calling on that in the name of Jesus. God, we ask you to continue to hold our hand and hold our faith. We continue to hold our lips to you. And we continue to let us look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. We ask all these things in the name of the Father, Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.
Lincoln Park Holiness Church is about loving people and helping community. Our main objective is winning souls. You are welcome to partner with us or help sponsor this ministry and broadcast with a donation. Please visit our website at lincolnparkchurch.com and click the Let's Give tab at the top of the screen. Feel free to leave comments. You can also download the Givelify app on your mobile phone and look for Lincoln Park Church. Cash app, cash tag, Lincoln Park CRF. We are located at 13 Heath Street in Raleigh, North Carolina. God bless you, and we look forward to you joining us next week on NFI Radio and Catch the Wave from the number one radio station reaching the world with gospel music and preaching.